Let's go to another Facebook message we received from Brian. I know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, but I struggle with the way God is portrayed in the Old Testament. I have a hard time making sense of God using Israel, judging nations through wars where women and children were killed. A, a, a really a difficult yeah, question that it, a lot of people wrestle with, Mike. It is. It, this is a big one. Um, when you go back and you read the book of Joshua, yeah. uh, the cleansing of the land, uh, actually the Old Testament reveals the same God as the new, Brian. Uh, in the Old Testament, God's not only righteous and just, but he's also loving and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And the God we behold in the face of Jesus Christ isn't only loving and merciful, but he's also righteous and just. So we have a God in both Testaments who's the same God. Uh, God created the world in justice and righteousness. He created us in his image as reflecting his holiness and his righteousness, and yet we sinned. We have gone our own way. We have rebelled against him. We've marred his creation. We've committed cosmic treason. And so what's really remarkable when you read about the holy wars of the Old Testament is how limited they were. (laughs) You know, really, that it was was limited to a particular generation, a particular uh, place and time. And we got to remember what was happening at the time. You had people squatting on God's land. It was God's land. It wasn't Israel's land. It wasn't the, the Canaanites' land. It was God's land. And they were, they were not just, uh, you know, wandering around loitering in his land. They were offering their children to Molech. Uh, they were offering sacrifices to Baal. They were uh, idolaters. They were uh, uh, ruthless in their treatment of other nations living in the land. These were... We're, we're not savory folks. Um, well, you look at that and you say, actually, that's all of us. That's why the Apostle Paul says uh, in, in Romans 3, 19, therefore, n- by the law, no flesh will be justified. No one is righteous. No, not one. That means that the whole human race stands under God's judgment and condemnation. So it's it's true that you have the flood and then the bloody conquest of the land of Canaan in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, Jesus himself, as well as his apostles say, in effect, that's nothing. That's just a sneak preview. The final judgment is global, and it's for eternity. Everyone is going to face the judgment seat of Christ, and you have the wrath of the Lamb throughout the book of Revelation. I mean, really making all of those holy wars of the Old Testament seem small by comparison. So if you have trouble with the quote-unquote God of the Old Testament, you have trouble with the quote-unquote God of the New Testament. They're the same God, and the only difference is, whereas it was just a sneak preview, it was limited in its scope in the Old Testament, it will be universal and final in the New. That's why we have this wonderful reprieve, this time between Christ's two comings, Uh, where it's time to get in the ark. It's time to flee to Christ for safety. It's time to be like Rahab, the 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 Mm. the pagan prostitute who who said, I want to I want to be part of the people of God. Uh, We were once outsiders. We were once aliens to the promises of God. And now we we had not received mercy, but now we have received mercy. So let's this is the day of salvation. Take hold of Christ. Yeah, and even that story of Rahab highlights how God was merciful to those who turned to him. Absolutely. And so you know, one of the things I wanted to say, Brian, is you know the, the per- passage you were referring to initially is in Hebrews chapter chapter 13, and I think it's really important that we understand it in its context. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In verse 7, the author of the Hebrews said, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. And then he says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teaching. So really, what's being focused on there is not necessarily the the eternality and the preexistence of Christ, although that's something that the author of the Hebrews really believes. It's on the unchanging nature of the message of the gospel. This is what was preached to you, so so don't be led astray by strange and diverse teachings. Jesus is the same, therefore the gospel message is the same throughout the scriptures, and that's wonderful news. It's something that we can cling to, and so hopefully that's encouraging for you, brother. 